September was a very tough month, and it started out so good. I think at the beginning of September in the first week or two, stock market was up 3 or 4%, and then it just collapsed from there. This is all part of the downward trend in the market that I believe we're going to. Guys, I hear you out there. It sucks to see the stocks you love go down, but guess what? Everyone's stocks will go down. Value investing, I love value investing. I live and breathe value investing, but guess what? It doesn't mean that when stocks are down, your investment's gonna go up. The goal is that they, one, either don't go down as much, or when they do rebound, they will come back much stronger because of their great fundamentals. September was so hard. Tech stocks were down 10.5%. I believe the S&P was down 9.5%. Just crazy numbers, especially considering we came off such a strong August. All these things were happening. It was very frustrating. But guess what? That's part of the process. If you go back and you look at all the major downturns we've had, 2000, 2008, 2009, back in the 60s and 70s, stocks don't go straight down. There has to be some sort of oversold, overbought. Right now, as of two days ago, the monetary, looking at the money inflow index, stocks are oversold. That means there could be a balance. And guess what? Yesterday, we had stocks being up a lot. Today, pre-market, stocks are up a lot already. So it doesn't go straight down. It doesn't just collapse. This is part of a process. Now, what I'm about ready to say will make a lot of people scared, but don't be scared. This is an opportunity. I am very, very, very confident that we are not at the bottom and nowhere close to it. We're going to look back, timestamp this video, mark it down. I don't care what you need to do. Email it to yourself and look at this video three, five years from now. We're going to look back on October 4th, 2022 of me saying we're not even close to the bottom and we're going to see a chart that goes like this in some fashion from here. Now it might do this, but we're going to see much lower lows. Why? Because I look at the metrics of the stock market. I look at three major metrics, stock market to GDP, price to sales ratio on the entire market, and the 10 year cyclically adjusted PE ratio. And they all show that we are 40, 50% higher than where we should be. Actually, I'm sorry, double where we should be. We need to fall 40 to 50% just to get to historical levels. Now, unless you believe that this economy and this stock market is different this time, there are a lot of issues. Guys, we have interest rates going up. Keep in mind that the major justification and what drove stocks so high was such low interest rates that paid 0% on your checking and savings account. So it made people say, hey, if I can get 2% dividend yield from the S&P or even 1.2%, I'd rather invest in the S&P and see it go up and up and up and collect my dividend. But now the rates have skyrocketed. You're going to start seeing the costs of living go higher. People have less discretionary income to put in there. And you start seeing this downward pressure on stocks. It's no coincidence that in the nine months this year, the NASDAQ's up over 30, down over 30%. Why is that? Well, as I said in dozens and dozens and dozens of our videos, the most overpriced stocks fall the hardest when times consolidate. When a bear market comes, the most overvalued stocks fall the most. And we saw that. All the hype stocks that I criticized, all the ARK investments that I criticized, they all fell huge numbers. Does that mean my stocks are not down? Absolutely not. My stocks will also be down. Absolutely, my picks will be down. My goal is that I can buy better companies at better prices in a future that I can understand. I can't understand. Look at all the companies now that were hyped a year and a half ago. People saying, this company is the best for the future. And now all the stories are, well, they didn't exactly hit this. They didn't exactly hit that. Look at Tesla. Tesla fell 8% yesterday. Why? Because they had a record quarter, but it wasn't big enough. They, Wall Street analysts were like, wait a second, what's going on over here? You were supposed to hit this number. You didn't hit the number. They missed by a few thousand cars. It sent the stock plummeting. Should that happen? Of course not. If Tesla was really worth what it's worth, it should, it should be, hey, listen, they had another record quarter. Yes, they had some pitfalls, but they're on their way. This is all part of it. And the Fed is continuing to fight inflation. Guys, there was some good news overall. Gas prices were very stable in August. Now, this is for nationwide. This is, everybody's area is different. I know California has obscene gas prices. We're in Ohio. We have much lower gas prices, but 
At the end of August, the average gallon for all grades was 394. Beginning of October, it was 391. So slightly down, but inflation is still a real issue and the Fed is going to fight it. How are they going to fight it? Very simply, interest rates. They're going to keep increasing interest rates. Why is that? Because in order to slow down inflation, you need to cool the economy. And they keep telling people, like they said, inflation was transitory. They're telling people, we're trying to work on a soft landing. Guys, I don't know how you increase rates this fast, this much this fast, and have a soft landing. I don't see that happening. Now, am I making my bets based on that? Absolutely not. I'm not a guy who's going to go make my bets on some short-term decision by the Fed. What I will do is look where the stock market is relative to history and see where I think things are going and what are the headwinds. And right now, raising interest rates with the Fed still talks about being very adamant. Their goal is 2% inflation. And they have come out and said there will be a hurt to the economy for that. The question is, is it going to be as easy as they're letting people believe it is? Guys, unemployment is a lagging indicator. It shows we have very low unemployment numbers. This is great. But unemployment always lags the economy. When the economy starts to slow, then companies lay off people. So I would guess sometime in the near future, either we're in one now or sometime in the near future, we're going to enter another recession. And that's okay. Recessions are an opportunity of a lifetime for many people. It's all a matter of perspective. Am I trying to discredit the fact that people are going to be hurt and suffering? Absolutely not. But every great recession we've had in the past has led to better economic times for every single person in this country. Everybody's, the, the tide raises all ships. Everyone gets better. Do people suffer in the meantime? Absolutely. I was just fortunate enough to go overseas. I was in Italy just last week, and it's amazing. Their unemployment rate is double digits. I didn't feel that. We were in places, people were working, people were happy. We didn't see homeless people asking for money. It wasn't like that. We've had 10, 11% unemployment numbers in my lifetime three times. In fact, during COVID, we were at 20 some percent unemployment numbers. COVID was a, take out COVID, I still experienced double digit unemployment twice in my life. And I asked people, the first one, I was very young. How was it? Well, it was tough. And, but they got through it. And the economy in the early 80s, we had stagflation. We had high inflation with stagnant growth. Feels a lot like today. And Volcker came out and said, we're going to raise interest rates, raise them to 15, 18% they got on mortgages and the Fed funds rate. And guess what? The economy from mid 80s to the end of the 1990s was incredible. And it absolutely boomed. We saw the richest time in our history. We had surpluses in government. We had booming economy. We had low unemployment. Everybody did better afterwards. And that's what you need to remember going forward. Now, the good news about raising interest rates is it is doing what the Fed wants. And I know there's a lot of haters out there who say, oh, there's inflation's high. It is high relative to last year. But you look at a month to month change, August prices only increased 0.1%. We don't have September's numbers yet. That is promising. We've had a few months in a row of very stable prices. Now, we still hear inflation numbers based on last year, which are going to be high. But month to month, it is still very stable. We are seeing much more stable prices. That's what increasing interest rates will help do to the economy. Remember, guys, you can't have your cake and eat it too. You can't have booming labor market and no inflation. You can't, these things don't work together. You have to, it's a healthy balance. And right now, the Fed will sit there, and they were very open about this in the past. Their goal is somewhere in the 5% unemployment rate. At that level, they can keep inflation tame, keep enough people working, keep enough incentives out there for businesses to get people more, to, for individuals to get more training, get better jobs, et cetera. When unemployment's very, very low, it actually hurts labor markets at some point. You end up paying too much money for labor and causes inflation. That's what ends up happening. You guys have heard it a thousand times lately that people can't find good people because the government was giving out checks for people to stay home and not work. So where was their incentive to work? So business owners had to go pay more and more money to get workers. Well, what does that cause? Inflation. You have to pay more money. Jobs that we used to hire at 12 or $15 an hour are getting 15 to 20 all day long now. That's inflation. That's what happens. I'm all in favor. I'm not one of those people who goes, oh, inflation sucks. Inflation can be a good thing. Look at real estate prices. Look at inflation from 75 to 84. 
1975, 1984, interest rates went from 9% of the home to 13%, but yet house prices almost tripled. Why? So you saw a 50% increase in the cost to borrow for a home, and you saw housing prices almost triple. Why? Inflation. Because when inflation is out there, the cost to build that home skyrockets, so the homes that already exist go up in value. There are positive externalities to inflation. You have to look at the whole system, and we're trying to manage an entire system. The thing that bothers me is the Fed, because of the internet now, the Fed has basically become, it's supposed to be an independent office. It is not anymore. Fed Chairman Powell, before Trump took office, said, I want to raise interest rates. The second Trump took office, it stopped immediately. Why? He, has, he wants his job to be secure. He doesn't want to be blamed for causing the economic problems the country is eventually going to have. But now that things are starting to crack, he is absolutely going to take that for a ride, in my opinion. He's going to increase interest rates. I do believe that we are in a steady environment of increasing interest rates. A year and a half ago, my fiance got a mortgage in her house at 2.625%. That same mortgage today is well over 6%. The exact same mortgage just a year and a half later, maybe two years now, I don't remember the exact date, but even say two years ago, it's over doubled. And if when you have a mortgage of $300,000, that costs you an extra $700 per month. And if you make 100, 120,000 a year to afford that kind of home, that's big money out of your pocket. That's big, that's 10% of your take home pay after taxes, that increase net cost. You better believe that's gonna cause you to, cause home prices to come down a little bit. But again, if inflation keeps going, and so it continues to be an issue, that's going to be... Now, for those of you out there who say, well, we want prices to come down, deflation may be worse, and here's why. In deflation, people put off their purchases. They would sit there and say, well, why should I buy that today if a month from now, it's going to be cheaper? I'll just wait. So deflation hurts economies, could hurt economies way more than inflation, because then people are pushing off their investments and their acquisitions, their purchases. Hypothetically, a car costs 30,000, but deflation is prevalent. You sit there and say, well, why should I pay 30,000 for today? My car works fine, I'll wait six months, it might be 26,000 then. It hurts the economy more. So that's something to remember as time goes on, it's a healthy balance. There's no one specific move that is perfect for everything. This is a very complicated economy, a lot of moving parts. My goal for you, is to look at the entire situation and realize there's positives and you can react to what's going on out there. Don't try to sit there and guess what's gonna happen, just to react to what's going out there. Now, for me, I've got eight or nine businesses upstairs. I've got hundreds of apartments. I've got so many levels of cash flow. I can take my time waiting for the exact moment to pounce. But for the average person out there who's saving for retirement, your job is to just dollar cost average and not worry about all this noise. All the noise out there, that's what being a good value investor is. Not about having a high IQ. It's about having the right temperament, having the right emotional aptitude to be able to sit there and say, I don't care what's going on out there, I keep buying. A good friend of mine called me the other day and said, Paul, I had $2.7 million in my brokerage account, now I have 1.5, but that's good, right? I just still keep buying. I said, you got it spot on, keep buying. Now, if that 1.5 becomes 750, 800, We'll see if he believes the same thing. I've told this story before. In 2006, two friends of mine sat me down and said, Paul, this is when the market was booming. We want to save for retirement. They were young, 26, 27 years old. I said, okay, great. Let me ask you guys a question. If the market fell 50% today, what would you do? And I remember clear as yesterday, the wife looked at her husband, looked at me and said, well, we buy more, right? I said, boom, exactly. Fast forward two years. I get an email, frantic email from the wife. Paul, what's going on here? I said, well, if you remember, we said this and this. She wrote back, wait, you're actually buying? I'm like, well, if you remember our conversation in which you said you'd buy more, she said, I can't take this. I'm selling everything because I don't want my stocks to go to zero. And she was invested in long-term ETFs and mutual funds. She wasn't invested in individual hype companies. That's the mentality that I feel we have to get to before stocks bottom. And we're not there yet. We're nowhere close to there yet. People still want to own stocks. We need to get to the point where people don't want to own stocks. The good news for you is you found this channel. You need to subscribe because when things look the worst, I will be speaking the most positively. Trust me when I say that. There'll be a time, I'm not a perma bear. There'll be a time when I look at investments and go, guys, buy these stocks in the long run, buy more, you will do well. And stocks will go down. You'll be like, I hate this. It's not 
the right thing to do. You have to look at the long term. I will be the glimmer of hope in the future when things get worse because things will get worse. This video is awesome. If you're new to the channel, you need to watch the next video about how recessions are an opportunity of a lifetime. Thank you very much for your time.